Feed the beast. Howdy folks, Grok the Duck Farmer here, and I'm on the patron server playing a little Feed the Beast Revelation. And speaking of a revelation and feeding the beast, I'm here in the test kitchen because it's time for a special. It's time for cooking with the duck farmers. Woohoo! Yep, and that what you just heard, as she is there in the sound booth, is Mrs. the Duck Farmer. Howdy, folks. She's real cute. Aw. And we're going to tell you how to make a really yummy dish called funeral potatoes. And... There, there's there's a debate as to why they're they're called funeral potatoes. Uh, one one side says you know they're a great comfort food for when when you're feeling sad and and so you know, like uh, you can also feed a large group of people with it and you know hey starch and covered in fats mmm delicious and it's great for a funeral. The other idea is if you eat it all yourself, it's your funeral. Because <laughs> so much carbs and fat. Yum, um, yum, yum. But it is very delicious. And you, know, you could go with cheesy potato casserole. But if, if you want to be a little less gauche about it. But let's face it, everybody calls it funeral potatoes. And it's yummy. So, uh, Niece the Duck Farmer loved funeral potatoes. She, she thinks it's the, the best food in the world. And whenever it's her birthday and she gets to choose what to eat, she asks for funeral potatoes. Of course. And she has a very strict recipe of what is funeral potatoes, and we can't deviate a, a bit with it. She is very much a purist, and mm -hmm. things have to be just so. So there are some alternatives when it comes to funeral potatoes. She won't hear about it. But you will, because she's not here today. That's right. So we will talk about some variations later. But uh, down in the description, it has the, the recipe, and you can follow that. Plus, you know, if you want to try some of those uh, variations, you can do that too. Anyway, let's go ahead and start off. Uh, we need to go ahead and grab ingredients and a big mixing bowl. Hey. What? You broke it. No, I didn't. It's, it's just fine. It's right there. Uh, uh... Okay. I, I used my silk touch pick. It, it's it's fine. I can I can move the bowl around. It's just it's no problem. Okay. It's right there. See. Okay. Uh, let's go ahead and gather up some ingredients here. Uh, gee, do, 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 grab a bunch of stuff. All right. So we have ingredients, and we'll start with the potatoes. Uh, it's a great thing, like I said, a fridge Velcro. It's it's something if you've got leftovers, you can use, and uh, you can use regular baked potatoes. Um, casseroles need things cooked. Uh, you don't cook the casserole, you just heat up the casserole. So if you've got leftover baked potatoes from some big baked potato feed, then you're looking at something like two pounds of uh, these baked potatoes. And so you just kind of throw them at the, the pot, just like that. Or, you know, uh, not like, just that. like that. Not like that? No. What do you, that's it, not getting in. Well, I, that's a problem. I think it's because it needs to be chopped first. That's the problem. So uh, let's go ahead and grab that chopper and we'll chop it up. And chopping sounds like this. Just like that. Yeah, more or less. And uh, so we've got the potatoes all chopped up in there. Uh, probably want to remove the, the, the potato skins. Yeah. Which is what I did here, because I'm lazy. Now, I didn't use the, the baked potatoes at all, uh, because I'm too lazy to, to cook them up first. Instead, I went with a bag of frozen hash browns. But not the grated kind. What you you want to look for is the southern style hash browns. They're little cubes, and you're looking for 32 ounces or two pounds or a kilo. This is pretty common in the United States. It may be less so outside the U.S., but anywhere in the United States, if you're going to a large grocery store, they will have either the Orida brand of southern style hash browns, or they'll have a store brand, um, and you can. Pick them up and take them home and make funeral potatoes with them. Mm -hmm. So uh, you want about uh, two pounds of it and it preferably thawed. So you can take it because they come frozen and throw that in the refrigerator for a day or two. And that will nicely thaw out. Uh, if, if you don't have the time, it means you got to bake it longer. And we'll, we'll talk about that later. So uh, we need another ingredient. Oh, wait, I've got the ingredients on me. Uh, the next thing you want is some cream of something soup. I know it says chicken noodle here, but really it's cream of chicken or cream of mushroom soup. Yeah, there is no cream of <laughs> soups in Minecraft, so this is as close as I can get. Cream of what's it? Cream of what's it. Uh, you want two of these cans, no diluting, you just leave it as is. Uh, 
The Seduct Farmer says that uh, the cream of mushroom is the best. If you don't like mushrooms, if you don't like those little mushroom bits in there, then, you know, don't do that. Uh, cream, of, cream of chicken is a good substitute. Yep. Uh, if you want to really annoy Mrs. The Duck Farmer, you can go ahead and, and uh, do cream of celery. No. Just no. <laughs> That's okay. gross. <laughs> and again, uh, so no you just more kinda, need be said about that. Yeah, you see, you just kind of throw it, and it works. All right, so uh, let's go ahead and and uh, toss in. All right, uh, where's my mixer? There's my mixing bowl right there. Why do you need a mixer? Uh, to mix it. Oh no, it's there. Uh, yeah, so there's the you put in the two cans of, of soup. I, I forgot this is a bowl to mix things in. Uh, mm. I, I was just confused. Uh, anyway, so you've you've got your potatoes and two cans of, of uh, cream of what's it, and then we need to add a pint of sour cream to give that nice little tang to it. Mm. And so uh, you know, again, heavy cream, and uh, we just throw it in it. Or we go over here and we use the mixer because that's what we use. We use the mixer. Yeah, I just think you're using that mixer as an excuse for something. Could be. So we've got the potatoes and we've got the, the, the soup and we've got the sour cream in place. Uh, the, the next piece that you want is an onion. It gives it a nice flavor and Nice the Duck Farmer says you've got to use uh, th those white or brown onions, your yellow onions. They're not a red. That's the wrong one. But... Um, a white just, or a yellow, what yeah. what they call a brown or a Spanish in, yeah. in uh, the UK and Europe. So uh, one of those, small one, uh, dice it up and throw it in. I think she's wrong. I think it you can't just throw it in raw like that because it's too raw oniony. Uh, and some people will, will take it and saute it so that the, the onions are really golden brown. That's it's It's good flavor of onion, but it's too much. The problem with both raw and brown is that they tend to overpower the dish. It, yes. it tastes almost exclusively of onions rather than anything else. Yeah, and so I say the, the proper thing is a nice happy medium of translucent. You want to get that raw off, but you don't want to cook it so hard that you're, you're bringing out too much of the onion. So translucent onions in there, and I don't have any onions with me, so poof, onions are in there. <laughs> <laughs> and then the next thing we need is some cheese. Oh, wait, wait. Before we what? go on to cheese. What? We can, you can use your regular onion, but I'm going to say, even though Nice the Duck Farmer will disagree with me on this, I actually prefer to put in a small bunch of green onions diced up very finely. Uh, you don't have to saute them. They can just go in as is. Mm -hmm. And they add a very nice, slightly herbal flavor to the dish. I agree. I agree. The the scallions or green onions is a great addition here instead of the other onions. And it's easier because you all you have to do is just chop them. You don't have to cook them. It's easy. Right. Uh, I don't have any scallions with me. I just have the onions I threw in, and so we're, we're good. Uh, so the next we need some cheese, and I keep looking over to the cabinet. But no, I have the cheese with me. But what I do need is a grater, and that's not a grater. That's not a grater. That's not a grater. All right. Where did you put the grater? I didn't put it anywhere. Yes, you did. Did not. Yes, you did. Mm. Okay, so maybe I did. Ha. But uh, you sit there and you shred it up uh, and you pile it in with all the rest. Now, sharp cheddar. Uh, the sharper, the better, because you want that flavor to come in. And with only one cup of cheese, you know, the more flavor there is in that cheese, the better. <laughs> he said cup of cheese. Yeah. And so the... Uh, thank you. Uh, and so if you happen to have... A real dislike for cheddar? Tough. Make it with this way. <laughs> make it well, first. Make it this way the first time. You yeah. can try other stuff afterward. If you want, you could, you know, you can add a milder cheese, but a little bit more of it. Mm -hmm. You can throw in a little bit of Parmesan if you want to be fancy or some Gouda or whatever you happen to have. Don't use blue cheese. I do love blue cheese. This is probably not the best dish for it. Yeah, moldy cheese is right out. Mm -hmm. Anyway, so uh, what you want to do is sit there and mix this really well, and then grab yourself a uh, casserole dish. And it, since it's way over there, I can just grab it over here just fine. And uh, what we want to do is, is mix this up really well and dump that into it. And uh, for some reason, I've got to look over here. 
No, really, why are you looking over there? Uh, because uh, I had to mix this stuff up, and that's that's what happens. You can't look at the thing when you mix it. Is it kind of like a watched pot never boils? Exactly that way. I see. So what you want to do is take out your silk touch uh, pick and go ahead and break that and toss that into the cooking oven that's set to 350 degrees. And uh, you slide it right in there. You, you can can't do that yet. Why? Because it needs topping. Ah, you're right. That's why it wouldn't let me put it on there. So, obviously. Obviously. So what it needs is a topping because, you know, that's just bland and boring looking. You just look at that and you go, am I going to eat this? No, it's bland from all directions. It's looking bland. So uh, instead, what you want to do is put a topping on it. And the purist, she says that it must be cornflakes. So you go ahead, yeah, don't do cornflakes out of a bowl. That's just wrong. And but, also do not use, like, sugar-frosted cornflakes. That's, mm -mm. don't put sugar in your funeral potatoes. No. Take, like, a cup of cornflakes, uh, mash them up so they're, they're fine, uh, mix them with maybe a tablespoon or two of, of butter uh, melted. Uh, that helps the browning process. And you just spread it around the, the top of your casserole. Just sprinkle it on like it's magical fairy dust. Yep. And uh, just Don't throw the bowl of cornflakes. I'm trying to throw the bowl of cornflakes. But you don't just fling cornflakes onto it. It has, sure. to, it has to be prepped. Okay, so you, you prep it nicely and you, you gently put it down as much as you want. Uh, if you just want a little sprinkling, put just a little sprinkle. If you want more, put on more. Now, Nice the Purist Duck Farmer says it's got to be cornflakes. I actually think there are some other very, very tasty methods. You could sit there and take potato chips, uh, particularly the, the, the hardier, the crunchier, the thicker, the better. Uh, Trader Joe's makes a really good salt and pepper uh, potato chip that's kettle fried. That's fantastic. Crunch those up, throw them on there. Yum. Because nothing's better with potatoes than more potatoes. Exactly. And uh, see, well, oh, it fell off. Uh, but anyway, that actually is really, really good. Uh, another option if you want to, because we've gone with corn, we've gone with potatoes. We could also go with bread. Uh, you can take, I would say, the best breadcrumb to use this with would be the Japanese panko because it's extra crunchy. Yeah. And uh, again, mix it with a little bit of melted butter, sprinkle it over the, the, the top. You want that layer on top to add some nice crunch and also some brown uh, to this dish because it's, it's remarkably yellow and white. Um, you know, if, if you have one of those yellow 13 by 9 pans, it's very yellow. Yep. Uh, anyway, so sit there and, and uh, put the toppings on, and then throw it into the oven. So let's go ahead and grab this, and we're going to throw it into the oven. There it is, in the oven. <laughs> is that how it works? That's exactly how it works. Let's see. Just like that. The mysteries of Minecraft. Yep. That's the wrong dish. But thanks to the miracle of cooking shows, where you have an extra one in the oven, we've got it here. It's nicely browned on top. Ooh. It's so good. Oh, you, uh. I can smell it. It's so good. Uh, oh, yes. So uh, what you're looking at is, is about a 45-minute uh, bake time in the oven. If you went with completely frozen uh, hash browns because, you know, lazy and you didn't thaw them out beforehand, you're looking at least an hour, maybe more because crunchy potatoes is not a good deal uh, unless, unless they're chips yes you know right here you know chips then, are allowed to be crunchy but yes. funeral potatoes are not allowed to be crunchy. no no they're not allowed to be crunchy they should be nice and soft and delicious inside so you may have to to cook it longer uh, you could be really gauche and stick a spoon in the very center and and sample some of the potatoes and see if it's too crunchy and you bake it some more but no, <laughs> that that's strangely weird. You're looking for it to be bubbly on the side like this is, and uh, you know, we, well heated all the way Nicely through. Nicely browned on top. Browned on top, just like that, and it is so good. In fact, uh, let's go ahead and do a little cut to the, the the image of what this looks like in outside of Minecraft. You can see this batch was done with the cornflakes as um, the purist says, but you can see little tiny green flecks in there of the um, green onions. So she didn't eat this batch. <laughs> but we mine. did. It we was did. delicious. It was very good. Um, hot and bubbly, 
you can serve it with all sorts of other yummy foods. Uh, ham, this goes very, very nicely with, with ham. It is a traditional accompaniment to ham. Yep. Uh, you could also have any other sort of food. You could actually you know, serve it with chicken. You could serve it with other types of pork. Uh, I'm trying to think, you know, beef on the side. Yeah, you, know, you could serve that or you could just do like niece the duck farmer and you just sit down with a big spoon and, and it's yours. <laughs> And she does. Uh, it's, it's very scary. And now she's going to be mad at us for telling uh, the rest of the world that. Don't tell her. Shh, quiet. <laughs> now, addition var- variations. We, we talked about um, you could do it with actual baked potatoes or hash browns. I go with hash browns because I'm lazy. And they're uh, always available. And they're always available and, you know, without having to actually bake the, the, the potatoes in, in the oven because, you know, that's, that's work. Uh, or boiling them in, the, in a pot because that's work. So instead, um, the frozen hash browns works out very well. Thom, uh, cream of something, sour cream, uh, onion, variation of green onion, much better. Mm-hmm. Uh, sharp, sharp cheddar cheese. You can go with other cheeses, but eh, no, sharp good, cheese. Good melting cheeses are going to be good in this. Yes. Uh, Gouda would be good in this, but if you're going to use Gouda, you want something that's a little more strong to go with it, maybe matching it up with some Parmesan, or mm-hmm. if you can find Gouda Pirano, that's a really good combination that's uh, a combination of the, the meltiness of the Gouda and the sharpness of a Parmesan. Mm-hmm. That's very tasty. Uh, and then some sort of topping. Uh, the tradition says cornflakes. I like the, um, the, the, the chips, the, the chips, potato chips on top. Um, panko actually is really tasty. That works out really well. Yeah. But I would not recommend using, say, crushed saltines for the top of Mm-mm. this. It's already salty enough. Yeah, don't need to do that. Now... Uh, additional flavor you could take the, the the ham that you would serve this with if you chunk that up and throw that into this dish and, and cook along that's very very tasty it's a full meat and potatoes meal that way it is or you could you know take that flavor dial and dial it all the way to 11 and put bacon inside it eh. oh bacon you, you fry up the bacon till it's you know it's good and cooked you know you're not talking you know shatters sort of fried but uh, a good cut uh, chop it up Throw that in there. It's gonna soften a little bit because of the the, the boil time, the boil, the the bubbling time in the, the the thing, the casserole here. But bacon is really tasty. And then you could put a little bit of bacon sprinkled on top. You could put some rashers along to kind of you know guide the whole side. You could have a, a side of bacon on the you know in a plate. You don't believe there's any such thing as too much bacon, do you? There is no such thing as too much bacon. I see. And uh, then when you're all done, it's all bubbled up. You sit there and uh, take it, and then you say, hey, look over there, and then you run away. Hey! <laughs> because it's so yummy. I want some. Okay, okay, we'll have some. Yay. But first, first got to go ahead and uh, end this episode. Oh, okay. So, Cooking with the Duck Farmers, teaching you how to make funeral potatoes. They're so delicious. Yes, they are. And I, they're easy to make. It's really not hard. It's just a little bit of preparation, a little bit of bake time in the oven, and then having the the willpower to not have, you know, like five helpings. This is supposed to serve eight people or, according to my cookbook, one hungry teenage boy. <laughs> so keep that in mind. Or, or your sister. Or, or, or my sister. Or, for that matter, niece the duck farmer. Yes. Everybody loves funeral potatoes. Who can blame them? That's right. They're they're tasty. If you make it, um, definitely drop me a note in the the comments below and tell me how how it turned out. Or if you go to the FTOG Discord channel, you can post a picture there of what it looks like and how it turned out. Mm-hmm. It's so good. Yes, it is. Anyway, this has been Grok the Duck Farmer here doing a little cooking with the duck farmers mm-hmm. here on the Patreon server. And in the test kitchen. Mm. Thanks for watching. Bye. Bye. Now I'm going to eat this. I'm going to have some. Nope, it's all mine. No, I'm going to have some. No, no, you didn't make any of it. You were just sitting in there. Hey, whatever. I introduced you to this recipe. No, my mom made it. Whatever. She didn't make it the way I make it. Fine. Yay.